roast them, roll them. What we have here is some preheated maple sap off of maple tree because it's sugar bush time in the Adirondacks. We've got a hardwood fire going and it's cooking pretty good. Okay, see what we got going on. Well, basically we boil this stuff down 40 to 1. 40 parts water to one part sweet maple syrup. These gentlemen here are dressed up in old time regalia. They got some cedar little logs here tied together. Held in place, a little bit of ice. A little bit of hardwood, a little bit of softwood. Somebody put a new fur floor down in their house, on their deck. <laughs> See that nice now, This TNG? was a nice donation. I, I, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> it's V Groove TNG. Yeah. But it does burn very well. We get a quick hot fire with the softwood and a slow burning fire with the hardwood. That's what you're looking for. So we boil that down to 40 to 1, 1 40th. One part maple syrup, 40 parts water. And the people here say, whoa, that stuff is so sweet. <laughs> but you got to wait till next year to you have it again. Yeah. Yeah, so one. <laughs> it's a once a year treat. Yeah. I only had about 12 flapjacks and about a pint of maple syrup. <laughs> How about last year, year? Well, not quite. I'll be ready for it tomorrow. <laughs> Steam's up at Parker's Sugar House. Shazy on the Altona border. Yep, we got the ducks yep. in the river here. And the river's not running too high. Small river. We got some cutie pie duckies. Hey guys! What's going on? You're not scared of Corvair Wild, are you? Earlier in the day, the people were lined up all the way to the next county waiting for some sat flapjacks with maple syrup. These gentlemen are showing what was done in the old days. We've got this yoke to put around their neck and they've got some bottles here with unfiltered maple syrup. The good stuff right on the bottom, that's the best stuff. You know in Newfoundland they've got this uh, stuff they call screech, it's the scrapings at the bottom of the barrel. I partook of many of that in college, sir, I'm Three well aware. <laughs> <laughs> we, our college in, in Cornwall had three floors of Navy students from Newfoundland. Uh huh. And there was many a wild evening. <laughs> <laughs> Screech right from the bottom. This is what we got right here, but it gives you a different kind of high. It gives you a more mature high. A little lightheadedness. I'll stick to the syrup. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I used to stick to the sauce, but I'm past those days. <laughs> oh, just like old times. Well, we're down about an eighth of an inch. Another four inches to go. Actually, we're looking for workers because uh, we want to take off that weekend. Yep. Yeah. Just like in the old days. For uh, 1800, I call it the 1800s electric drill. Oh, boy. Oh, is that how you tap the tree? It's um, the hand auger. Hand auger. So, where is today? We have electric motors that do the work for us. Battery oh, operators. Brace and bit. There you go, right into the hardwood. Maple being a hardwood, it's deciduous. It loses its leaves in the fall. And before they bud in the spring, the branches. I like the squeak of that drill. So you've got to drill it deep enough to be able to set. Get the sap in. This isn't deep enough, but it'll work. <laughs> and when it's on the tree, you don't have the uh, luxury of being able to empty out the hole. But what you have to do is drill out a hole deep enough to be able to set a sap into. Now, before the metal bucket, buckets and taps, we had used to have a wo uh, use wooden taps and buckets. And the wood wouldn't be strong enough to hold up the... Uh, buckets. So if you set in, you have to set up the bucket underneath it. 
so the sap come out of the tree, flow into the bucket. I'm not having any luck with this at all right now. <laughs> it's because we're watching. So then, as your buckets fill up in the woods, you've got to go collect them. For logging, you've got a team of horses like the one around here to help us collect our sap. If not, someone's got to do it by hand. So we take the shoulder yoke, put it on our shoulders, grab the bucket. Which, thank goodness, is empty at the moment. And small. And small. And this is how we would take it out of the woods and bring it over here to our fire. Which is positively rolling. Got a good breeze to the north, keeping the smoke out of our faces. And you can start to see it's starting to get <laughs> some color. Yeah, a little color to it. And the steam's rolling off there, which means it's always getting closer to the syrup. Yeah. Talk about the steam being up at Parker's Sugar House. Steam is up. Now, at that, how long would it take you this way to get it to syrup? Yes. Uh, Provided you had a rolling boil like that all the time, or, or a rolling fire. Well, we started with the uh, batch this morning of sap. It started up here. And we just boiled it down to almost the bottom. It wasn't quite syrup. And we had another bucket of sap. So hopefully at the end of this we'll have something that's actually syrup. I think but it's basically been taking all day to do it. In their evaporator that they have inside the building, this huge evaporator the size of a big pickup truck, it burns probably 25 gallons of oil an hour. An hour. Your house may burn one gallon an hour. So it's cost them $100 an hour of heating oil. And we make 60 gallons of syrup an hour in there. So it's $100 to run it approximately if it's 25 gallons yeah. an hour. Oil is almost four bucks a gallon. A lot of money. That's why you need to have enough uh, enough sap built up before you even start it up. Otherwise, you gotta get you, you end up using more money than you make. Right, I suppose. Eh? Yep. Yeah. Forty to one. But then that gentleman on the other side where the ladies were doing the candy, he was doing a fair. He was bottling pretty consistently. Yeah, it did. So it said we'll do about 60 ounces a gallon an hour there. This is uh, not so much. Just for demonstration purposes. Yeah, but at least you're not paying the oil to run it this way. No. Well, you got to collect the wood. There's still a lot of people that do burn wood making syrup. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to cut the wood down, split it, dry it. There's a lot of people that they only have, you know, a few hundred taps. I want to the first. Indians, long time yeah. ago, because the sap runs naturally. So someone figured out to drill a hole and collect it. There's actually a couple, uh, there's a, two Indian legends, or Native American legends I know, that deal with the, with the maple sap. Uh, the first was that long ago, the sap flowed out of the maple trees as syrup, and that you could drink, and it came year-round. And one of the Indian gods came down to the village and found his fields deserted, and the crops were being neglected, and no one was hunting, and he found the, he found all of the residents in the maple grove, and they were all sitting underneath the syrup trees, letting the syrup flow into their mouth, and they weren't, uh, and they weren't doing anything. So he got mad at them for being fat and lazy, and he went to the brook, and he, he took 30 cups of water and diluted the maple trees 30 times so that it would weaken the sap, and then made it, make it, made it only run 30 days out of the year. And to get the sugar that they remember hard, they remembered so fondly, they would have to do a lot of work to get it. So that was, uh, and the other legend deals with that, um, this is, I think, an Iroquois one, that there was um, uh, an Indian white squaw, whatever, she was making, uh, uh, she was boiling meat for her husband, without and uh, she let the, the pot boil dry. So instead of going down to the brook to get fresh water, she went to the maple tree and got the sweet water from the maple tree. And she used that to boil the meat in. Well, it boiled down into the uh, syrupy, sweet mixture. And her husband was so pleased that they told everyone about how you could boil the uh, maple sap down in the syrup. Although uh, back then, almost everything was made with sugar. 
the, the, the hard sugar of, they didn't have it until the 18, late 1800s, they didn't have it like in canning and syrup. So everything before that, there was syrup during the, the sapping season, but other than that, it was all, all uh, sugar. The Indians used to make uh, carve out wooden molds to make the sugar in. Because you'd boil it down even more than the syrup, you'd let it harden the mold, you'd have sugar, kind of like the candy in there, but um, not whipped up. And as long as it stays dry, the, the sugar won't get preserved and won't go bad. So then they get eaten all their foods with it, and then just eat it for pleasure. Right, it was, it was, especially like at this time of year, you're not growing anything. It supplemented your, your food sources. And then the, the Europeans, when we came over, we introduced metal axes and, and, and metal kettles, and yeah, we introduced a lot of technology to it. All right, good story. Let's see what folks think about it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that screech. Have to go over to Newfoundland and scrape the bottom of a bucket somewhere or a barrel. I've heard a screech. That's a, the thing of legend. For You're me. too far south. Oh. <laughs> I don't know it's not legend, my friend. And I don't know a lot of Canadian reenactors, too. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. Many a poor, poor naval student was strapped to a chair. So you said you went to school before? <laughs> yeah. Partake in the screech up Cornwall, down. Ontario. They say that the city between two smells. Yep. With that big yep. processing plant right, right <laughs> below the bridge. Dom tar. Yep. 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 Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. The city between two smells. Three years of that, my dears. Alrighty. Alrighty. Well, Happy maple syrup time. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you so much for the story. Oh, well, thanks for coming. <laughs>